Hello and welcome back to the Bugle Easel tutorial series. Today we're having a look at the config settings. We can access them from this little cog button. It pops up this uh, screen on the right hand side. Let's have a, a quick whiz through these settings, see what we've got. Global settings, pretty obvious what the MIDI channel. I, I very rarely have very much interaction with MIDI channels because it's primarily when you're using multiple instruments, which I don't have, I have a single MIDI keyboard, so I don't particularly care about that. Preset settings, however, everything that we've done on, in this uh, tutorial series until now, the synth's been uh, a mono synth. In fact, I've actually referred to it as a mono synth, and fundamentally it is, but you can have some limited polyphony from this value here. If I choose four, we actually have a polyphonic keyboard now. Now it's very limited, you've got very little control over how the polyphony um, is implemented in the Bucal Easel. Now the polyphony op operates on a last in first out kind of basis. I can demonstrate that quite easily by playing one, two, three. My other notes are going to disappear off the keyboard. Now I'm going to toggle this low C. the other five notes that are being held down are basically each being given a precedence um, in turn in a round robin kind of fashion and it's making a melody one two three four five kind of thing as it as it cycles between each of those notes that take over when the when the low C disappears so last in first out other than that yep you've got a polyphonic keyboard it's a bit weird coming out of the bugler but there it is Let's set it back to one. I, just, I don't feel right. Then we've got the MIDI page. So you've got a vast collection of MIDI options available to you. And if you can't see it on the screen from the default stuff that you're given, then you've got the option to add control. It's pretty much everything that the synth's got to offer. And the way we do it is pretty easy. If you want to um, apply a MIDI knob on your uh, keyboard to master volume then select the knob and somewhere it's a little bit difficult to see but it has actually been highlighted the channel number turns white so you can see the control that you've just selected so i just clicked on reverb level there and there it is so if i stay on reverb level now and move one of the controls i'll move controller number eight on my midi keyboard which is as you can see cc number 28 and now if I come out of MIDI mode, basically just come out of this page, my number eight controller controls that reverb. If we go back into it, uh, I'm also able to set the minimum and maximums. So if I set the minimum value that the knob can control this value by to 50%, it doesn't mean the knob itself is constrained in any way. You can still pick it up from the interface and move it down to zero. But now, now that it's at zero, watch, happen, watch what happens the moment I make any change to my um, keyboard controller at all. It immediately jumps to 50%. So any control, any command coming from my um, MIDI control ensures that it's constrained within the limits that I've set by those minimum maximums. So I'm now turning this knob pretty freely anti-clockwise. It's not going past 50%. Once you've done all of the config that you want, when you've got your keyboard set up how you want it, then obviously you can save your configs. Straightforward enough. Now the macro page is really interesting. It's more powerful than it initially seems, but it is also a little bit confusing. I'm not the biggest fan of the way it's been implemented. Let's let's just have a look, first of all, how it, how it actually works. So you've got four macro slots. Now the names are fixed and there's nothing we can do about them, unfortunately but the controls behind them are actually completely dynamic. So in the macro page, we have these left and right arrows, which we can cycle through each of the four different controls. The destination below is telling you what brightness is currently mapped to. So the complex oscillators timbre, which is here. So let's just concentrate on this for a moment and see what control we've actually got over it. Just as we saw with the MIDI page, we've got a minimum and maximum 
um, option. But if we click in the little button to, to open up the editing screen, we've got more options available to us. And this is where things start getting a bit counterintuitive. I'm going to pick up the Tamba control that, that this uh, control corresponds to. And I'm going to start moving it up. Watch what happens to the minimum value. So the minimum value tracks up with it. So we can't have a minimum value set below this slider position. And in fact, if I pick this min value up and drag down, then the slider comes back down with it. So those two things are locked together. Now, can you see that I've got this like limit that I can't go beyond? I'm dragging up as far as I can and it can't go past 0.192. That's because where that's that's where this physical slider was set. If I move that further up, now I've got a bigger range over which my minimum can operate. It's wherever the slider happened to be. And the relationship between these two things is really counterintuitive. You saw as I was dragging it then, I was at like 0 0.5 odd, and then it jumps to a new value. So it's trying to do too many relative offsets, and I end up just getting completely confused as to what's going on. When you add into the mix, you've also got the... Um, it's represented by this line here, which is the knob control itself, going from the minimum to the maximum. You can get yourself in really choppy water. I just think it gets too carried away, trying to do too many things, and I can't keep track of all of those different offset values and basically just end up kind of ignoring it for the most part. That's our complex oscillator timbre, which is the first and default value in the brightness option, but we have an add destination down here. So let's add, let's say channel A level, and that's now being added to this brightness control. If we want to throw the original one away, right click on it, and then the little delete option, it's not immediately obvious it's connected to this, but it is. If I click that, we've now thrown away the timbre control and we're just operating on channel A level. So having four configurable macro knobs is actually really useful and something that I think is, is a great addition to the, to the synth, but not being able to rename them, not great. Editing features overblown, unnecessarily complicated. But when I find something like this that's too complicated, I just throw stuff away until it's simple enough for my brain to process and then I'll use it at that level. Down at the bottom of the uh, instrument, we've got a panic mode. Just press the button if something crazy is happening and a MIDI um, control is firing and won't shut up. And we've also got a little history where we can choose any one of these and we can go back in time. And we've also got our undo feature here. You have to kind of move away from it and then come back in to see what the next thing is it's going to undo. So the entire history is there, but actually figuring out from this kind of very small interface what it is you want to change. I mean, you know, it, it's better it's better that it's there than not. Let's leave it at that point. So that's it for the tutorial part of the series. Uh, next, we move on to uh, Precept Deep Dives, where I'll try to take as many of these concepts as I possibly can, drag them into a real world context, try to show you the instrument stretching its muscles as much as I can. Hope you'll join me for that. If you hit subscribe and notifications, you'll be sure not to miss them. Hope to see you then. Thanks a lot.